This week on TGC News, two new guns from Ruger, a new concealed carry 9 from FN, 1 million 320s, a clear dust cover for your AR, SIG is in court a lot, and the background check numbers are in. You know, guys, I've been thinking about getting a hybrid lately. Nah, not the kind of hybrid you're thinking. The handmade in the USA kind of hybrid with leather and Kydex. The kind that is available for just about every popular handgun on the planet. The kind that's comfortable when you put it on and comfortable all day, even if you're a big guy. I might need a belt to go with it too. Crossbreed holsters will definitely check those boxes. And if you use the code TGC15 over at crossbreedholsters.com, you'll get a whopping 15% off your entire order. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. I'm pumped to have you guys here during the Corona apocalypse, and thank you for subscribing to the Gun Collective. Please keep your arms and legs inside the car because it's scary outside and there's no TP out there. <laughs> now, how about some news? First up this week, Ruger has made it back into the show with two new guns. The first new one is a version of the Ruger American lineup called the Ruger American Competition. As you can probably ascertain from the title of the gun, it's got some features leaning more in that direction. Let's run it down. Besides the standard American basics, same grip style and textures and all that kind of stuff, it has an extended slide that has speed holes for less reciprocating weight, as well as some nice serrations on the front and rear. It has a five inch barrel, fiber optic front sight with adjustable rear, and as everyone seems to be doing these days, an optic cut. And that's pretty much it. For the MSRP of 579, this might be a solid way to get into competition shooting without investing a ton of money. The other new gun Ruger released is called the PC Charger. It's essentially a chopped down version of the PC Carbine. I'll run down the specs real quick. It has a six and a half inch threaded barrel, M-lock handguard with the takedown system built in, a dinky little hand stop pre-installed from the factory, a pick rail on top of the receiver, interchangeable mag wells to accept different brands of mags. It comes with the Ruger one installed and ships with the Glock one as well. And then of course, the rear of the polymer chassis has a pick rail so that you can attach your favorite brace. <coughs> Use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. <laughs> and otherwise, it's the same as the Big Brother carbine version. Honestly, a gun like this has potential to sell way more than that carbine version. That gun's cool, but this one is a little bit cooler in my opinion. Brace pistols are all the rage and having a tiny little suppressed nine would be the bee's knees. MSRP is the same as the full size chassis variant at $799. I'm curious to see what you guys think of this one. Do you think it's rad or is it wet bread? Sound off in the comments below and let's talk about it. And now some more new stuff before we get into a little bit of industry news later. FN USA just announced the addition of a tiny little concealed carry gun called the 503. It's a slim, single-stack, striker-fired 9mm with a 3-inch barrel, what they're calling snag-free 3-dot sights, 6-round mags, some nice texturing around the grip, and serrations on the rear only of the slide. Otherwise, it's a fairly standard thing. In their promo materials, they're bragging about enlarged controls for better operation of the gun, even though none of them really look any bigger, and the all-metal trigger, which they claim will break crisp and cleanly at five pounds. There's an extended eight-round mag that also comes with the gun. Doesn't seem like there's anything groundbreaking going on here, but it would be great to have another solid choice for a gun in this category. The MSRP lands at 549, and when you compare that to the front runner in this category, the Smith & Wesson Shield, which has higher capacity and slightly lower $479 MSRP, things get a little interesting. Here's hoping the 503 does really well in independent reviews. Also in the news this week, Sig Sauer announced on their social media that in 2019, they hit a big milestone with the P320. They had made one million of them. 
And to celebrate, SIG Custom Works created a one-of-a-kind P320 with the number 1 million in the serial number. The grip inserts are made out of hand-cut granite, since the guns are made in the granite state. There is some really nice engraving with 14 karat gold inlay around it and an all-metal high-gloss polished frame. It's a gorgeous example of the work they do in the custom shop and a really cool way to celebrate. By the way, if you've never seen any of the other SIG custom guns, please go Google that because it's amazing. They do some incredible work. I highly doubt this gun is for sale, but that's not really the point here. It's more about how cool that gun is and celebrating that milestone with them. This next one is something that I haven't quite settled on yet. I haven't figured out how I feel about it. It's from a company called Space Rifle, and it's a product called The Hatch. Essentially, it's a clear plastic dust cover for an AR-15. The selling points they're using for this thing are uh, questionable. They start by calling it an optical dust cover that allows you to see the position of your BCG and ammo with the cover closed. They say that it's 50% lighter than the standard mil-spec metal dust cover, and they brag about it having a Delrin detent so it doesn't wear down your receiver. Not once, ever, have I thought to myself, Man, this dust cover is heavy. Or, man, I wish I could see where my BCG was. Or, man, I hope this dust cover doesn't wear down that little notch in my receiver. <laughs> Not once have I ever thought any of those things. I'm the type of person to basically never close the dust cover anyway. But, at the same time, I don't think any of those things are bad. I do have concerns that this thing will get dirty pretty fast, kind of blocking your view, especially if you're shooting suppressed. And with the MSRP of 30 bucks versus five or six bucks for a metal version, is it worth that extra cash? Part of me hates it and part of me's indifferent. What do you guys think? Is this thing pretty cool or is it stupid? How about some gun industry news? Sig Sauer seems to spend a lot of time in court, and two of their many cases that they always seem to have going on have had a bit of a resolution. First up, Steyr Arms sued them back in 2017 for patent infringement, essentially saying that the design of the P250 and later the P320 was using the same plastic housing and multifunction metal part removably mounted thing that they had patented back in 2001. Long story shorter, a U.S. District Court judge granted a motion for summary judgment and found that SIG did not infringe on Starr's patent and then dismissed the case. That's a big win for SIG. However, in 2018, they had a class action lawsuit brought against them alleging that the 320 would fire out of battery or in the unlocked position due to the lack of a disconnector that was actually included in the voluntary upgrade program that came out after all that drop testing stuff showed that the gun would fire when dropped at very specific angles. It seems they have come to a settlement on this class action. It's pretty funny to me because in the settlement page on their website, they are immediately being defensive about it, claiming that Although the plaintiffs have not proven their claims, SIG has reached an agreement to resolve the case. <laughs> the next paragraph down also starts with defensive language. SIG denies the plaintiffs' claims, and by entering into this agreement, SIG is not admitting that the allegations have merit. <laughs> but for some reason, they still decided to settle. I think this could be maybe for a few reasons. Maybe it's cheaper to settle than to fight it. Settle! Settle! Maybe they were going to lose the case because they were unable to prove their side of things, or maybe they just wanted it to go away and stop paying lawyers for this one. I don't know. Either way, it's an interesting move. If you want to make a claim or see if you're part of this, you can go to sigsour.com slash Hartley and see how you might do that. Also in industry news, the February... 2020 NICS numbers are in, and boy, are they high. <laughs> Almost 750,000 more background checks versus February of 2019. And I suspect March will be even higher because the NICS staff said that on the 16th of this month, they were experiencing a 300% increase over the prior year. Likely because of the panic buying, but holy crap, is that a lot of guns selling? 
I know you guys have seen that gun stores all over the country are sold out on ammo and sometimes guns, and Lord knows how long that trend is going to continue. Neomag offers a slick solution to discreetly carrying a spare magazine securely in your pocket. Available in small, medium, and large to hold anything from 380 to 10 mil. Also now available are the extended clip versions, which allow you to carry deeper in your pocket or carry your spare mag with an extension. Utilizing strong neodymium magnets, a steel backer, and titanium clips, these things are built to last. To get 10% off your entire order over at theneomag.com, use the code TGC10. It's time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions. This time, our questions are coming from our loyal Subscribestar supporters. If you aren't supporting us over there, please click the link down in the description, head over to Subscribestar, and become a part of our season ticket holders. That would be awesome. First up, Daniel Hayden says... How do we reach all of the first time gun owners? They need info and safety. I totally agree. And I think the best way to reach them is for folks that make content and write articles and that sort of thing to focus their attention on these new folks. It's also up to everyone else out there to welcome them into the community, share content that you might like that aligns with how you feel and try and put as much good information in front of these people as possible. Welcome them into the community and show them how great it is. It's actually gonna be a little bit weird and tough right now because a lot of ranges are closed, but now is the perfect time to educate. And please, for the love of John Moses Browning, do not bitch at them for the laws that are in place. Don't blame them for things, even if it is their fault. Educate them on what the laws are and let them discover the unjustness on their own. Guide them. Don't try to force stuff on them. William Moonen says, what will be the next mainstream caliber to die off like 40 has? And Ryan R says, do you think due to the recent surge in gun and ammo sales that 40 will see a resurrection? Yes, it will see a slight resurrection, but that's sort of a forced one because all the smart people bought nine mils. <laughs> and the next caliber to sort of die off will be 380, I think. It'll take a while, but I think with the rise of the nine, 380s will start to fade away like 32 ACP and 25 ACP did. Austin Fink says, what will be the fallout of this surge of first-time gun buyers cleaning out gun stores across the country? Will it be more gun rights voters, a flood of used guns on the market in a few months, and or maybe more unsafe things happening due to lack of training? The simple answer is yes. There's no good way to predict the behavior of folks. I suspect that we will absolutely see more folks that were sort of in the middle move towards our side but not everyone will. We may even have more people that say things like, I'm a gun owner, but followed by some tyrannical nonsense. We will also likely see a bunch of people decide to dump their gun for half of what they paid for it in a very short period of time. Guns are not for everyone, and that's okay. And yes, we will likely see some not safe things happen, but we need to look at them as opportunities to educate. Not everyone is up to speed on gun safety. Again, it's our job to welcome these people into our community and teach them how to have fun safely. My friendly fire question to you guys, where have you seen the best pricing on ammo? And how about the worst pricing on ammo? Who's price gouging right now? Share it with the class down in the comments. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, send that to me on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show. I would love it if you guys hit the like button to show your support. And if you think we've earned it, get subscribed as well. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. It has a five inch barrel, fiber, fiber, it's got a fiber optic one side. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.